Coming to you live from the corner of Mississippi and Fate, Texas, comes the hashtag Brothers of Baseball. I love baseball. Donnie and Willie Bepte. I see you do all the time. The thickest things you are. Baseball fans, we welcome you to this edition of the hashtag Brothers of Baseball here on the one, the only official broadcast station of the Dallas Charge Pro Fast Pitch Softball on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. And as always, this edition of the Brothers of Baseball is being brought to you by Pure Flix. Enjoy faith and family movies, TV shows, and educational programs anytime, anywhere for only $7.99 per month. Sign up for your 30-day free trial by going to bgcsports.net or on the BGC Sports app and click on the Pure Flix banner and start your free trial today. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Hashtag Brothers of Baseball. It is always our honor and privilege to bring you this broadcast from the great sport of baseball. And speaking of brothers, I have my brother with me, Willie Epting Jr., joining his little brother, Donnie Epting. Willie, uh, what's going on with you, man? Man, what's going on out there, brother? Nice to uh, be back with you again on another edition of this great show, courtesy of the great network, that's BGC Sports Network. Let's get this thing rolling. All right, indeed we shall. Uh, we're going to start off a little differently. Um, we definitely want to talk about the events that took place on the campus of the University of California, Los Angeles, uh, also known as UCLA. Uh, there was a shooting incident on Wednesday of this week, uh, Maynard Sarkar shot William Klug, um, his former professor, and then proceeded to commit suicide um, at an engineering building on the UCLA campus on Wednesday morning. This is according to the Los Angeles police. Uh, Sarkar, uh, wow, 38 years old, uh, lived in Minnesota. And there are some other details that came out Thursday about Mr. Sakar um, that we'll get into here a little bit later on. Uh, well, if you don't mind, I want to kind of read a little bit of an excerpt uh, from the UCLA newsroom uh, about Mr. Klug. Absolutely. OK, uh, it says Klug, a beloved and committed scholar, conducted life saving research that also involved colleagues from UCLA's engineering, science and medical faculty. He specialized in computational biochemics, or excuse me, biomechanics, I'm sorry, and the mechanics of biological systems such as cancer cells. Um, Klug has been a member of the UCLA community uh, from, or excuse me, going back to 1998. So um, Mr. Klug was 39 years old. Uh, Just reading that bit of excerpt there from the UCLA newsroom, uh, Mr. Klug did some some wonderful things in his time here on Earth. And uh, again, you know, we, we do these shows here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network, and it seems like, if not every week, it's every other week. Uh, we're leading off with some form of a tra- tragedy that has taken place. And our thoughts and condolences go out to the Klug family, uh, those who have been affected by this on the UCLA campus. Uh, it's just a, a sad situation all around. Willie Epting, let's, let's get your thoughts on this uh, tragic situation out in los angeles yeah how is it this is the second straight week that we're talking about violence on a prominent campus higher institution in this country last week it was baylor albeit not nearly the seriousness of this particular issue but a serious issue nonetheless with this one ending in the the ending of two people's lives I have a definite opinion about people who kill and kill themselves. Uh, First off, they have a deeply troubled spirit. Uh, This is two crimes against the Ten Commandments. And not that I'm trying to go churchy, but this is the Big Game Christian Sports Network and we are Christians. Uh, Secondly, uh, there is a coward or spirit of a, a coward spirit, if you will. That takes over a person whenever they kill somebody. But that spirit of cowardness 
if that's even a word, if it's not, it is now. Um, it just goes to another level when that person turns the gun on themselves. Um, you know, the bottom line is they may not be one of faced with what goes on in the court of public opinion, the court of law, or maybe what goes on or what's going to happen to them um, should they be convicted and sent to prison. You know, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but, you know, let's remember two very important things with this. After we get over our <laughs> our judgment and our feeling of, quote unquote, how did this happen? Uh, two lives are gone forever. Two lives are gone forever. Yeah. Uh, and one probably has no chance at eternal life because they committed one of the ultimate sins, which is killing yourself. Um, so my and our, I think I speak for you, Donnie, and also the uh, BGC Sports Network when I say our thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to all of those individuals that are connected to these two. Um, hopefully and prayerfully, uh, you'll find the strength from above that will carry you through this and will somehow be able to get some peace uh, that he promises all through any circumstance. Yes, indeed. Um, just as a quick wrap up on uh, the situation uh, with Mr. Sakar, or Sarkar, I should say, uh, he had a was being called a kill list, according to uh, the LAPD's chief, Charlie Beck. Um, it had Klug's name on there. Another UCLA professor uh, who has not been named, uh, but he is safe, uh, as well as the person in Minnesota who is also has been killed and um, they are now saying that that was Sakar's wife um, so an all around an all around tragic situation there in Los Angeles and as Willie said our thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to all that are involved all right Willie we're going to uh, talk about a little a little baseball now. Um, you know, baseball is a, a favorite pastime of ours here in the country. And, uh, you know, let's let's talk about something to make the people feel good. Let's do Al it. Although, <clears throat> excuse me, our first topic is going <laughs> to make some people not feel so well, especially those in the 216 in Cleveland. Now, the good news here for Cleveland fans, your Cavaliers are playing in the NBA Finals. The bad news is, well, play ball. Marlon Bird, the Major League Baseball performance-enhancing drug policy was violated by Mr. Bird. This is Bird's second suspension. Marlon Bird has been suspended for 162 games. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we call a full season. Marlon Bird is 38 years old, a 15-year veteran. This positive test is likely to end his Major League Baseball career. At 38 years old, hey, it's, it's going to be hard to kind of bounce back from this. There is another guy who's up there in age who I'll mention in just a second, um, who also received a 162-game suspension for violation of the performance-enhancing drug policy. Uh, Terry Francona, manager of the Indians, was quoted as saying, Bird, basically, he told the guys that his career is over. And this is not how he wanted it to end. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of criticism of the situation, but it doesn't take away that we care about him. We care about our team, but we also care about the individuals. So that hurts. It feels like we got kicked in the stomach a little bit. Willie, before we get your thoughts in on Mr. Bird's suspension, uh, Marlon Bird is the third player to receive a 162-game ban from Major League Baseball the other older guy that I mentioned a moment ago, Alex Rodriguez, in 2013. And then Jenry Mejia uh, received a 162-game ban in 2015. Ball and Bird, likely the end of his career based on the suspension. Willie Epstein Jr., you're my big brother. I need some advice. I need some thoughts from you. Lay it on us, man. I mean, what can you say? I mean, he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. This is the second time in four years that he's been suspended. 38 years old, former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket. He did have a pretty 
pretty productive career. Uh, you know, he had a one million dollar salary that, of course, he would not receive any any part of because of the suspension. <laughs> but from a team standpoint, I mean, it comes at a cost or it comes at a price because the Indians are playing some really, really good ball right now. Right. They're right there hedging up against the Kansas City Royals, who we will also talk about here later on in the show mm-hmm. and contending for a, a, a playoff spot. Yeah. And he wasn't doing too bad this year. I mean, like we said, he's 38 years old. He's 15 years in the league. This year he was batting 270, five home runs, 20 RBIs. So he was a productive part of that lineup. So now, you know, they have to figure out how, who or how they're going to plug somebody in there in place of this guy. Right. Career numbers. I mean, pedestrian at best. 159 home runs, 710 RBIs, did have a career batting average of 275. He's made a lot of money in his career. Um, he's played with several different teams, mm-hmm. was instrumental on, lead, on helping some teams get to the postseason. Yeah. Uh, but this is going to be a black mark. And I do believe at 38 years old and failing his second drug test, he's done. No, and I, I definitely agree with you. I mean, I... <laughs> How does this happen? Not, not just once. How does this happen twice is, is my question. They give you a list of the band, they being Major League Baseball and the Players Association and uh, you, know, you have the different anti-doping agencies. You get a list of things that are banned. These are pretty much in your locker rooms and your clubhouses. How do these players continue to get popped? get hit on the hand with the uh, switch off the bush. You know, mama used to make you go get your own, you know, don't go get a switch that's not going to hurt you because you'll get hit harder. I mean, right. you know, these players, are, it's, it's unfathomable. Big word here on the Brothers of Baseball show. It's one my, unfathomable. One of, one of my favorite words, by the way. Very good. That these players continue to, as you call it, Willie, reach into the cookie jar and uh, come up with some bad cookies. Um, we and I, we were even joking last week about banning you from the show for a PED field test. And here we go, man. We, no, no, we, I, we, I, we I trying to talk up. We trying to we trying to joke around, and we've talked up this man's suspension. I said I cheated, but I, I'm I'm not gonna even go there with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, real quick before we move on uh, off off Marlon Bird here, uh, he's been a great player. He fit that Terry Francona environment. You have a bunch of young guys on that Indians team. You have some guys that have played, you know, for quite a few years, some, some I would call them mild veterans. And then you have an older guy, a guy who's been in different clubhouses, uh, been around different teams in Marlon Bird. And he, you know, he was kind of like Jason Giambi was for the Indians a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, he was like the grandpa of the team. So you, you hate to see a man go out this way um but then again marlon bird he did this to himself uh willie i know you were kind of waiting on me to pronounce the the name of the drug that he tested positive for uh i have it um and i'm gonna try to say it well let's hear it okay it's spelled i p a m o r e l i n and i'm going to pronounce it as i p morellin Ipomorelin, and it's a peptide prohibited. Uh, it, I, wow, one year suspension for Marlon Bird. That is, it's, it's just crazy that these guys continue to uh, get a uh, get popped on the hand there for these doping violations. Uh, so Willie, you mentioned the Indians. Yeah, they're right in the thick of it. Um, a big series this weekend. Um, they're playing a four game set against the Kansas City Royals uh, who come into that series on top of the AL Central. Uh, but as the case with D. Gordon's suspension from earlier this year, you know, this team is going to have to figure out how to press on. And yeah, Bird may not have been the 300 hitter, the, the guy at the top of the line, I'm getting on base and getting over, getting runs in, but a valuable, a valuable piece. Uh, Bird has also played with the Phillies of late. Uh, in recent seasons, and or excuse me, not the Phillies, the Pirates, and help the Pirates get to the playoffs. And, you know, that's the kind of spark, and that's the kind of 
uh, personality that you definitely want in your clubhouse. And unfortunately for the Indians, they're going to have to trudge it without the services of a Marlon Bird. Any, uh, any quick final thoughts here, Willie, before we take our first break? Yeah, the question I have is why? I mean, why do these players keep doing this? Why do they keep getting caught? Uh, as you stated earlier in the segment, they get a list of the banned substances. So I don't know what it's going to take. You know, this guy, his season is over, career likely over. So I'm just, I'm just confused as to why this keeps happening. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I definitely agree with you. All right, good people. We're going to step out of the battle's box and take a timeout. But we're going to come right back in. We'll take our cuts in the, at the plate, and uh, we'll talk some more baseball coming up after this brief timeout. The Brothers of Baseball here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. The following was recorded at a Burger King drive through at breakfast. Morning, welcome to Burger King. Can I get a sausage, egg, and cheese croissant sandwich? Sure can. Right now they're two for four dollars, but could you say that word again? Chris sandwich? Oh, where I'm from we say croissant sandwich. Wow. Where are you from? From behind this counter? Piled high with thick-cut bacon or savory sausage, fluffy eggs, and melted cheese. Get two Chris Sandwich breakfast sandwiches for just four dollars. Only at Burger King. Limited time only. Price and participation vary. All right, baseball fans, we welcome you back here to the hashtag Brothers of Baseball here on the one, the only, the official broadcast station of the Dallas Charge Pro Fast Pitch Softball on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. This edition of the Brothers of Baseball is being brought to you by Pure Flix. Enjoy faith and family movies, TV shows, and educational programs anytime, anywhere for only $7.99 per month. Sign up for your 30-day free trial by going to bgcsports.net or on the BGC Sports app and click on the Pure Flix banner and start your free trial today. William Team Jr., let's, let's get some sounds from you, my man. How, how's it going? You, you good? Man, everything's great, man. Ready to get back in this battle's box? Let's take some more swings at this thing. I'm going to take my rips. Oh, boy. Just don't, yeah. just don't rip your pants. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Folks, that's how brothers talk to each other. We, we just hope that you know that. That's how brothers talk to each other. All right. Let's uh, talk about the important series games that we've seen over the past week. Um, as we mentioned last week, we were coming up on the Memorial Day holiday, uh, which was this past Monday. Had some great action this week. Willie, let's uh, get you in and discuss what you want to recap from the prior week. I have to go with the pitcher's duel that took place in Flushing Meadow, Queens, New York, on this Monday, past Monday, rather, you had a team that's struggling in the Chicago White Sox, and you have a player that's struggling in Matt Harvey. Okay, so you're thinking that Matt Harvey is going to be Matt Harvey again sometime soon. Well, sooner came a lot a lot quicker than later did in this particular matchup. How about Harvey in this one to, one to nothing pitcher's battle against the White Sox in which he went uh, seven strong innings, allowed only two hits while striking out six. He, oh, by the way, lowered, and I use that term very loosely, <laughs> <laughs> lowered his ERA to 5.37. Uh, he's now four and seven on the season. So hopefully this will be the thing that jump starts him and getting back to the Matt Harvey that we all know and some people may not love. Uh, yeah. Especially <laughs> you gotta, the opponents. <laughs> all right. You got to give it up for, for Chicago White Sox pitcher Carlos Quintana. He also went seven strong innings. He was on point with all his stuff. He allowed one run on six hits. He also struck out seven. The only mistake he made was a solo shot to Walker in the bottom of the seventh. But get this, man. These two teams combined for only nine hits the entire contest. Mm. That's uh, that's small ballish, right? <laughs> yeah, baseball version. You're right, and not the uh, not the stretch four playing five. What the heck is a stretch four anyway? Anyway, that's basketball. Let's yeah. respect baseball. I was just about to have to reel you back in, man. <laughs> I got to reel you back in. All right. Yeah, that uh, I watched a lot of that that game on Monday. Uh, it came on uh, ESPN, if I'm not mistaken, on the holiday. And, uh, yeah, Matt Harvey, he did start to look like the Matt Harvey of old. 
And I'm going to tell you something about Harvey, man. It it just starts it starts in between his ears. And that's inside. That's his confidence. That's that's the mentality to go out and say, hey, I'm as good as pitcher, as good of a pitcher as the National League has or the majors have. And, I, you know, I'm just going to go out and throw my filthy stuff. And he was, you know, he was clocked at 96 uh, quite a few times with his pitches on that in that game. And, you know, the White Sox have a good hitting team, Todd Frazier, um, Mr. Abreu. Uh, but they they were unable to solve Harvey on that day, and uh, he came out victorious. And maybe maybe this is the start of something. Uh, the Mets folks, you know, they again they want to get his confidence going, and they also looked at some different things mechanically, um, as they were saying during the uh, ESPN broadcast. So maybe this is what'll get Matt Harvey turned around. All right, I'm going to focus on the series that I picked uh, in the last show, the Cubs and Dodgers. They played. Excuse me, a set at Chavez Ravine. No, she's not Chavez Ravine. At Wrigley Field in Chicago. The, the Ivy. Yeah, the Ivy. I'm thinking about it, the palm trees. Uh, they played a set <laughs> in Chicago on the north side. Chicago took three of four in that series. Dodgers, this was their chance to kind of maybe get back in that race against the Giants in the NL West, uh, but it didn't come to fruition. Uh, Let's talk about Monday's start first. Jason Hamill was getting ready to go in for the third inning. Experienced some pain, looked like it was a leg injury. He came out of the game. He allowed one hit to Justin Turner. Willie, do you know how many hits the Cubs' bullpen gave up in uh, in the other innings of that game? Why don't you tell us, Donnie? Okay, they gave up as many hits in that game as I have for my entire Major League Baseball career. That would be zero. You would be correct. Great work by the Cubs bullpen. They had to be stretched a little thin that day, uh, but they went in and got the job done in taking that first game against the Dodgers. Uh, Tuesday's game, (laughs) we saw something that we hadn't seen in quite some time. The Chicago Cubs had a 23-game winning streak when Jake Arrieta took them out. Not necessarily that Arrieta figured in all those decisions. It's just that when he started, the Cubs had won the last 23 games. That streak was stopped as the Dodgers picked up a 5-0 win. Arietta did not figure in this decision, so he's still undefeated this year. And the Dodgers took advantage of that Cubs bullpen that maybe, like I mentioned, uh, had to be worn a little thin on uh, Tuesday. Wednesday's game, John Lester, he pitched his first complete game of the season, gave a one run, allowed four hits, and didn't walk a batter. This season, Lester has gone at least seven innings and five starts. In five of those starts, he's given up four hits or less in three of those five starts. So it was a good confidence builder to see John Lester go out and get a win. And then on Thursday, the Cubs picked up a 7-2 win as the, oh man, the rookie for the Dodgers, uh, Mr. Urias, took his first loss in his major league career. The 19-year-old who we spoke briefly of last week. Had a rough start against the uh, Metropolitans in New York City last week. This week, he takes an L against the Chicago Cubs. All right, Willie. Let's uh, hey, let's let's talk about the power. You know, we've we've got power around here. It is time to dive into our power rankings. Each week, we have our top five. Willie taking the American League. Donnie taking the Un-American League or the National League, as some people may call it. And you know in the National League, the pitcher still bats. I don't know if you remember that, but just so our people can, you know, make sure they're keeping up with baseball, the pitcher still comes to the plate in the National League. Ladies and gentlemen, he has a very big thing about that. <laughs> uh, in case you haven't noticed by now, uh, we're going to plead the blood of Jesus over my brother <laughs> and over this particular issue that he has about this going on the, uh, in, in baseball. I mean, I don't care that they've been doing it for the last 300 years. Let the designator hit a bat in both leagues. In both leagues. Anyway, let's get back to the power rankings. Willie, let's get your top five from the American League, and then we'll get your teams that are just a bit outside. Well, this is rapidly becoming my favorite part of the show and for a variety of reasons, because mostly because we have different information (laughs) in this segment or this part of the segment every week. So here we go. Bottoms up. 
Number five, Seattle Mariners coming in at 30 and 22 into this weekend's games. Number four, Baltimore Orioles 29 and 22. Number three, uh, Arlington, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Colleyville. Uh, all you guys stand up. Your Rangers coming in at number three in the OG's power rankings for the AL this week at 31 and 22. Number two, they're back. Kansas City Royals, 30 and 22. And sitting at the top of the heap, the American League East leading Boston Red Sox at 32 and 21 coming into this weekend's games. Um, let's see. Boston and Baltimore, they had a series this week, four games set. Uh, Baltimore picked up a win Thursday to give them a split in that series. And as we mentioned earlier, there's a four game series going on between the Royals and Indians. And the, uh, the Indians <laughs> rallied in the bottom of the ninth to pick up a win over uh, over KC to kind of shrink that lead uh, in the AL Central just a little bit. Uh, man, that's going to be a fight to the finish. And it, I'm going to tell you something about the AL Central. Don't count out Detroit. Do not count out Detroit. Man, with that hitting they got between uh, Cabrera, uh, J.D. Martinez, Victor Martinez, they've got some good pitching as well. Verlander, hey, don't count out Detroit. You'll hear from them before the season is over. And Verlander had a pretty good outing this week. He ran his record to 4-4, four and four, so he may be on his way back to the Verlander that we're used to seeing from uh, the middle part of this decade. So that's a very interesting choice that you made right there, Captain El Capteon. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Uh, the teams that are just on the outside looking in, or as we like to say, just a bit outside. My just a bit outside, Toronto Blue Jays, you guys are hot. You're getting right there, 29 and 26. <sighs> this pains me to say this one. Chicago White Sox, you guys are wow. struggling. Yeah. What a, what a difference two weeks makes. And uh, coming in also, checking in also is the uh, Cleveland Indians at 27 and 24, as we just mentioned with the Marlin Bird suspension and everything going on there. Yeah, Cleveland. Um, they, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to do what they can to stay in it. Uh, we kind of felt like the White Sox would come back to the pack a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, they look out for Detroit. They're gonna come along, but talk about the run of the Kansas City Royals. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, man. You, I, I know when we first started during the season, you, you know, you were kind of keeping them in there based out of respect. You know, they're the defending champions, and this, that, and the third. But now they're actually playing some good baseball. <laughs> they put some wins together. They're relying on some younger guys. Um, you know, we, we talked about um, Stockus and, and uh, Howell Hosmer having injuries. Alex Gordon, hey, that was a big transaction for Kansas City to bring back uh, Alex Gordon. So we'll see how all that pans out, especially in that AL Central. Uh, the East as well. Uh, Boston, Wow. The killer bees are at it, man. Bogarts, Betts, Bradley, uh, Big Poppy. Oh, I'm sorry, he's not a he's not a killer bee. I tried, but anyway, uh, <laughs> a lot of good things to look for. I want to ask you about Seattle real quick, Willie. Uh, they lost a series to the Minnesota Twins over the weekend. You know your wild card contending Minnesota Twins. Man, why are you bringing up old stuff? Okay, I'll stop now. I just wanted to get a rise out of you. <laughs> Successful. All right. Let's go over to the National League. We'll get my top five in here. Going to go with the Pittsburgh Pirates at five. Still playing some steady baseball. Uh, they're, they're still right there as far as second in the NL Central because number one probably won't be caught unless something miraculous happens. Number four, we're going to go with the New York Mets. It did kind of pain me to see them lose two or three to the White Sox at home. Uh, they've got a lot of pop in that lineup, but Lucas Duda is already out missing some time. Uh, found out Thursday that David Wright with a herniated disc in his neck, he may miss some extended time. So some things may go wrong with the Mets here. We're going to see what kind of moves they make. Uh, they, there's not another Yoena Cespedes out there to acquire at the trade deadline, I don't believe, uh, but we'll see what their – uh, upper management has in store for the trade deadline. Number three, the National League East leading Washington Nationals. They lost two or three at home versus the Cardinals over the weekend. 
But then they came back and got a sweep of the Philadelphia Phillies, who's been an overachieving team this year. The San Francisco Giants come in at number two. Uh, they've taken that top spot in the National League West. They've held on to it. Uh, we mentioned last week Johnny Cueto's starting to pitch really well. Ze- uh, Jeff Samarja, he's coming on. After Samarja, after Cueto, after Bumgarner, that's going to be the question for the Giants. What's going to happen in that back part of the rotation? Kane missing some time on the deal. Peavy struggling. So we'll see what happens there. And then number one, the Chicago Cubs, 18 and 10 in the month of May. They haven't slowed down much. They are the National League's leaders in on-base percentage as a team. And uh, when they get guys on base, they are driving them home. So five to one, Pirates, Mets, Nationals, Giants, Cubbies. Uh, My teams that are just a bit outside, let's look at the Cardinals, third place in the Central. As I mentioned, they did take two or three from Washington uh, last weekend in Nationals Park, and that's pretty big. Big series coming up against the Giants uh, for the Cardinals, so that'll be something to definitely look out for. The Miami Marlins, without D. Gordon, Giancarlo Stanton is still doing his thing, although he did struggle for a big part of the uh, early part of the season here. And the Dodgers, <sighs> you're still just waiting for the Dodgers to turn it around somewhere and somehow. Um, so we'll see how that pans out for them. Uh, but just a bit outside, Cardinals, Marlins, Dodgers. Willie, let's get your top five overall in Major League Baseball, sir. Yeah, I just want to say real quick, man, you and I had the identical <laughs> teams for the National League as well as for the just a bit outside. Amazing. <laughs> uh, number sheet off my paper. I know exactly, right? <laughs> uh, top five, Major League Baseball, bottoms up. Coming in, number five, the Champs, Kansas City Royals. Number four, we have the Washington Nationals. Number three, Boston Red Sox. Number two, San Francisco Giants. And number one, the Chicago Cubs. Wow, I'll make this short and easy. Uh, we had number five matching. We had number four matching. We had number one matching. Uh, I'm going to go with the Giants at three and the Red Sox at two. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, they, they call us brothers for a reason, huh? Yeah, same well, teams. Well, I guess because we, we do have the same Padre. Yeah, and Duh. we have, we have yeah, okay. Yeah, that would be father um, for, for those of you who uh, are, are into Espanol. Willie, uh, we got about two minutes left in the segment. Um, let's look at at the all-star game voting uh the first votes or first update for votes has come out we'll start with the national league (laughs) this is crazy (sighs) catching (laughs) not bugs bunny (laughs) but it's mr yadier molina of the st louis cardinals uh outfield you have join the you have dexter fowler of the chicago cubs fowler and not jason hayward Thought that was a bit of a surprise. And, of course, Bryce Harper. Let's go around the horn. And uh, we're going to tell you that they're all Cubs. <laughs> Chris Bryant at third. <laughs> Addison Russell at shortstop. Ben Zobris at second. And Anthony Rizzo at first. Your quick thoughts on the National League voting. Yeah, it was awfully nice of the Chicago Cubs players to let Bryce Harper play with them. <laughs> and and Yada and Molina from St. Louis, right? And Yada and Molina, yeah. Nice of the, nice of you guys. To let those guys play, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, hey, that's the fans' input, now. You know, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> this guy here, man. I, I I really just I don't know. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, <laughs> you, you know, if the Cubs do get that many guys in there. Man, are you kidding me? That that would be something close to a record. It's got to be something close to a record. Yeah. All right, let's get the American League in here real quick before we uh, wind up this segment here. Salvi Perez of the Royals is leading at catcher. At first base is Eric Hosmer of the Royals. Jose Altuve, second baseman of the Houston Astros. Third baseman, the leader is Manny Machado of the Orioles. Short My man. Stop. Yes. Shortstop Xander Bogarts of the Boston Red Sox. And then your three outfielders, Mike Trout of the Angels, Lokane, my man, of the Kansas City Royals, and Mark Trumbo 
of the Baltimore Orioles, who's having a wonderful season so far. Your leader and designated hitter is David Ortiz. Willie, I know you want to get some thoughts in there. We're going to get them right after the break. We're going to end the sixth inning here. Come back, finish up the show here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. It's the Brothers of Baseball. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Lisa with Check Into Cash. We give you more money for your title and guarantee the lowest title pawn rate anywhere. Visit CheckIntoCash.com and get a quick estimate on your vehicle. Save more and get more at Check Into Cash. Loyal customers have trusted us for 20 years for extra cash, and you can too. Restrictions apply. Bring proof of lower rate on similar title pawn. Visit CheckIntoCash.com for the store nearest you. Check Into Cash. All right, baseball fans, we welcome you back to the third and final segment of this week's edition of the Hashtag Brothers of Baseball here on the official broadcast station of the Dallas Charge Pro Fast Pitch Softball on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. This edition of the Brothers of Baseball is being brought to you by Pure Flix. Enjoy faith and family movies, TV shows, and educational programs anytime, anywhere for only $7.99 per month. Sign up for your 30-day free trial by going to bgcsports.net or on the BGC Sports app. And click on the PureFlix banner and start your free trial today. Willie Epting Jr. We are still discussing the American League All-Star starters as they've been voted after the first results have come through. We're going to run through the leaders one more time. We'll get your thoughts in on the AL guys, okay? Absolutely. All right. Catcher, once again, is Salvador Perez. First baseman, Eric Hosmer. Perez and Hosmer, both of the Royals. Second base, Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros. Third baseman, Manny Machado, Baltimore Orioles. Shortstop, Xander Bogarts of the Boston Red Sox. Outfielders, Mike Trout of the Angels. Lorenzo Cain of the Royals. Mark Trumbo of the Baltimore Orioles. And in his final season, designated hitter, leading by a lot. <laughs> David Ortiz of the Boston Red Sox. Willie, let's get your thoughts in. Yeah, just real quick, man, about the shortstop position. What a battle, <clears throat> excuse me, it is there with Bogarts and Escobar and Tulowitzki. Kind of reminds me of the 90s with the shortstop battles between Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, and a lot of people may not know out there that A Rod was a star at shortstop. Mm-hmm. Uh, before he moved over to third base when he went over to play with the Yankees. Right. And, and also very good was uh, Nomar Garcia Parra from the Red Sox. Right. And <laughs> Cal Ripken was still a shortstop into the late 90s when those guys really started to play. Cal Ripken was, you know, was still you know, getting ready to transition to third, but was still playing shortstop there into the late 90s. So you had a bunch of quality shortstops on that AL All-Star team all the time. Uh, and one more, um, Willie, that we want to mention at shortstop, Carlos Correa of the Astros. He's also right there. Yes. So, yeah, that shortstop vote will definitely come down to the wire. Uh, Voting ends at the beginning of July before they announce the teams uh, prior to the All-Star game this season. Uh, All-Star game this season. It is – where is it this year, Willie? Uh, It is in San Diego at Petco Park. That's right. Home of the fathers of the Padres. (laughs) (laughs) You need to quit, man. <laughs> For real. Okay. I'll stop. <laughs> All right. So keep uh, keep with us here on the Hashtag Brothers of Baseball. We'll update the All-Star voting uh, periodically as we get ready to get up to the Midsummer Classic and the All-Star game in San Diego this year. All right. Let's talk about some guys who are in fuego. <laughs> More Espanol. On fire. The players who are hot, who've excelled on the field recently, uh, as standard with our program, Willie handles the American League. Donnie's going to take the National League. Where the pitch? Okay, never mind. Please Willie. don't. <laughs> All right, Willie, go ahead. Who's hot in the American League that you want to tell us about? It would be very easy for me to say uh, Jackie Bradley. I'm sorry, Bradley Jr. out of uh, from Boston. It would be very easy for me to say Big Poppy. Ortiz from Boston. It would also be very easy for me to say Bogarts. Uh, this just in, he also plays for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> so 
So what I am going to do, <laughs> what I am going to do is that I'm not going to worry about picking one of those players. I'm going to pick the entire team uh, from Bean Town. Okay. Let me let, just let me tell you this. As I mentioned in the previous show, uh, they had gone five, or one of the previous shows rather, they had gone five straight contests with scoring at least ten runs over that span. They hit as a team. 397. Well, they have not really cooled off too much. Really, not at all. They're batting 296 as a team, which is unheard of. Sixth in the majors with 70 home runs. They actually lead the majors in RBIs with 305. Have a team OPS of 856. Oh, by the way, that is also best in the majors. And we make a big deal about what the Chicago Cubs have done in the National League with their run, di- di- <clears throat> excuse me, run differential. I said uh, the Bo Sox have a run differential of plus seventy six. Translation: They are hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in fuego. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that Boston lineup, man, is is quite deadly. Um, here's the thing with Boston for me. We know they can hit. David Price's ERA is now starting to come down. I think it's now down to uh, 14 or something. No, um, it's not that high, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but, hey, re- recently, uh, Clay Buckholz, he's not getting the job done. Uh, you know, Boston's going to have to make a move somewhere to get Mr. Price some backup. Uh, Porcello, I think Porcello's, you know, he's had a couple of decent games so far. He's actually having a pretty decent season. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need some some additional help from that starting lineup, or excuse me, starting rotation, I should say, uh, in order to help that lineup who's just been hitting the cover off the baseball. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy what they're doing up there in Beantown. All right, I'm going to pick one player uh, here from the National League. Uh, I would have gone actually with Ben Zobrist of the Cubs. He had a 16 game hit streak. Uh, during those 16 games, Zobris had three games where he amassed three hits and four other games where he had two hits. However, I'm going to go with the young man who's not so young anymore. Uh, he's one of the veterans out there in Colorado, Mr. Carlos Gonzalez. Uh, through June 1st, he is batting 464. Uh, with five homers and 10 RBIs in that seven-game stretch. Let's throw in there two two-baggers, doubles, uh, and he scored seven runs in those games. Cargo is looking like the guy of old, the former, or I'm sorry, the two-time all-star, because I don't like saying former. He's, he's an all-star regardless. Once an all-star, you're always an all-star, just not every year. Willie Hush. Uh, the two-time all-star has uh, gotten his batting average for the season up to 300. Uh, with this recent run, and his OPS is now near 900, and that's his own base percentage, uh, plus his slugging at that OPS. So Carlos Gonzalez starting to turn it around. Colorado Rockies are, oh boy, they're in that National League West where it, at the beginning of the year, didn't look well at all. You had teams at the top of the division right around 500. San Francisco's kind of taking off with it. Uh, Colorado is about two and a half, three games back of L.A. So maybe they can get some traction uh, during the summer and maybe make a run at one of the wild card positions um, because it looks like San Francisco in an even year, as we said countless number of times on this show, it's an even year for the Giants, and it's looking like they're in a tip-top form. Willie, you got something there? Even season. Yeah, even season. You got it. All right, we're going to go back over to the American League, and Willie, we want to talk about the second city, uh, one of the teams in the second city struggles. Second city is known as Chicago. You want to discuss the uh, struggles of the White Sox here recently. As we did mention, they did take two of three from the Mets in the big credit card up at City Field. But uh, I know you want to kind of give some insight on their uh, struggles of late. So what you got, man? Yeah, Donnie, since my rendition of an old school dance tune that came out, uh, back in the 90s where I was just praising the the efforts of Chicago White Sox, uh, they have struggled mightily since then. Uh, this was just three or four weeks ago whenever we 
did that particular show, uh, they've either done. I mean, one of two things has happened. Either they've <laughs> they they started out uh, and just grossly overachieved, and things are starting to level out, and the division is catching up with them. Uh, they slipped down to second place. They're like I said earlier, going into the weekend, they're uh, twenty nine and twenty five. I believe I said they were. They still have Chris Sale. Uh, he's still pitching lights out. Uh, but this is the thing. When we did that show and I sang their praises, they were 20 and 10. Since then, mm. yeah, since then, they are 9 and 15. So it's safe to say that this is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe because I can't sing. Right. <laughs> but this is the situation. I mean, we're now that was a lot. That was about four weeks ago. So from four weeks, to the, four weeks ago to the to where we are now, uh, they've gone nine and 15. The next landmark season or let, I'm sorry, the next landmark of the baseball season uh, is right around the fourth of July. So they have about four weeks to do something between now and that time. So let's see if they're able to recapture what they had from the momentum that they built in the first four or five weeks of the season. Yeah, and um, one thing that I did want to mention earlier on with the White Sox, uh, but we'll go ahead and and mention it here. Uh, Reports are coming out that they are interested in big game James, James Shields, uh, who's now with the Padres. The White Sox are interested in bringing him over uh, to add to their starting rotation. I mean, you look at Sale. And Quintana, and if they add a big game, James, who has had some great years when he pitched in the American League, first with the Rays and then with the uh, Kansas City Royals in that run that they uh, made in the playoffs back in uh, 2014. Uh, if the White Sox pick up a valuable pitcher like big game, James, hey, they're not going to go anywhere. Uh, now... Like you mentioned earlier, Willie, will the rest of the division just kind of catch up? Uh, But that's a big move if the White Sox can make it. Would definitely be beneficial for them uh, in keeping their hopes alive of winning that AL Central or at least grabbing one of those wild cards and uh, making this year's postseason. All right. With a couple of minutes left in this episode, we want to go ahead and look ahead preview of big series coming up in the in the next week willie we'll start with you what do you have well like always i have a couple series and uh fortunately unfortunately for uh detail purposes uh the pitching probables are not quite ready for this particular series and that will be uh the champs going back to the east coast to take on the baltimore orioles at Oreo Park in Camden Yards, in the harbor, in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, I think you get the picture. Yeah, 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 in North America. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, the probables have not been set yet. Uh, Kansas City is on fire after a pretty much mediocre uh, first couple weeks of May. They've been on fire since then. Baltimore is still holding their own as they're still battling with the Boston Red Sox for the top dog in the AL East. Uh, but do believe that is a three-game set, so that's going to go a long way in uh, determining what's going to happen with some seedings down the line, you know, with tiebreakers and all of that. And by the way, this is a rematch of the American League Division Series that took place in 2014. Uh, was it ALDS? It was ALCS. ALCS. Baltimore took that. Yeah, Baltimore took down Detroit that year, and Kansas City beat Anaheim, if I'm not mistaken, that year. And then those two teams met in the ALCS where Kansas City wound up winning a four four love over uh, Baltimore. Um, if I remember right, that was the uh, these O's ain't royal, as an Orioles ain't mm-hmm. royal series. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to look at the Mets Pirates. They're meeting... For three games, Monday through Wednesday in Pittsburgh. Uh, as Willie mentioned, the pitching probables aren't all there yet, but it is looking likely that the Mets will send Jacob DeGrom and Noah Syndergaard to the mound uh, in back-to-back games on Tuesday, Wednesday. Ooh, the Pirates, um, they're, they're right there. 
in the thick of things in the National League, they might be another team as we get closer to talking about trade deadline in July. Might need to make a move or two uh, to kind of solidify that position to ensure that they at least make a wild card because it is highly unlikely that the Cubs are surrendering that, that lead in the National League Central. It would take something absolutely catastrophic for the Chicago Cubs to lose that lead in the National League Central. Willie, 45 seconds left in this show. Quick final thoughts, sir. Uh, love you, man. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> love you too, man. And um, hey, this weekend we get to we get to spend a little time together. Uh, my nephew or your son, same guy, uh, is graduating from high school this weekend. Mr. Jalen, shout out to Jalen Jamal Epting on graduating from South Grand Prairie High School. So be good to see all the family. Will it be good to see you? And uh, it'd be good to hug my nephew and congratulate him on, on his wonderful accomplishment. He's going off to Tarleton State, going to major in business in the fall. Good. Maybe he can uh, write us some checks or, or get us some checks. Yes. Anyway. All right. That'll do it for this edition of the Hashtag Brothers of Baseball. For Willie Epstein Jr., I'm Donnie Epstein. Stay tuned to the Gordon Jackson Show. We'll talk to you again next week here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Take care, everybody. 